talking about you, Dave, and Bounty being in Bahamas, what really came first? Was it the idea of the Blood Sea song or the actual Time Bomb album make you guys actually even connect again like that? No, it's the, the idea of the EP. The EP is entitled Time Bomb, and Dave kind of wanted to get us out of our, our uh, comfort zone to record. So he said we, won't, we wouldn't be doing it in, in Jamaica. Because that's where Killer would be comfortable and he'd be one. He, he, he's the type of person that wants to party every night. So, you know? <laughs> so I'm taking about that comfort zone where he can focus on music. And because he, he, he didn't acquire back his US visa yet, we couldn't record here in the in the States where we have the studio. So we say, you know what? The closest spot is the Bahamas. And that's how everything came about. Dave had the idea for like almost four years now. We were supposed to start recording 2020. But then came the pandemic and we had to push everything back and now that everything is freed up we're ready to go and just started to put in the work like that even the blood sea song how did you guys even come up with a song like that say okay <laughs> we're gonna this is what we want to do right here because i know with three minds like a you a day yeah. a bounty in one place i could imagine how you guys came up with this how do you guys come you up? have to understand you have to understand that uh by right blood yeah. clot is jamaican national word no matter what you know what i mean i know they have this taboo around it and, and they try to criminalize it over the years. But no matter what, you go anywhere in the world and that's how they greet us. You know what I mean? And it's not really a, a curse word. It's really blood and cloth. Yeah. You understand? And it's coming from the days of slavery. And they, we had the idea we were sitting by, by, the, by, the, uh, by the water and killer was kind of catching us up on the crime that was going on in Jamaica. And sometimes when, when, when you kind of see how the Caribbean and all the world and Jamaica and all the crime rate has been going up, 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 up. Sometimes you just have to just, it's natural, it comes out natural for you to say blood with the CBI, you know what I mean? And that's how the whole idea for the song came about. Right there, because I know you were even um, friends with um, Slicky Anna? Yeah, Slick is, is, is a, a great friend of mine, you know what I mean? Anika, a.k.a. Slicky, and a great friend of mine, and for her to pass away like that, and for, for any human being, do anyone like that, or take anyone's life like that, you know what I mean? It kind of touched me different, and you kind of realize that the song is so, the song is so, it's one of them songs that will never, ever go away, you know what I mean? It's right here in our face, and we are living it every day, and some of us, it's happening to us at this present moment, you know what I mean? And it's sad, very sad. For sure. Even the visuals, what made you guys decide to even put out the visuals, shoot the visuals right away? Uh, so, so the whole idea for the project, the whole idea for the project Time Bomb, mm -hmm. we, we, we flew in a, a, a film team to the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. And even when we were in Jamaica two weeks ago, we had the same film team and we are doing the documentary. So when the EP drops, you'll be getting a documentary with the EP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the documentary will be shopped also. Mm -hmm. And that's how fans will be able to see how Dave work with myself and Bounty Killer in the studio, which they have never ever seen Dave in the studio. You know what I mean? Just working with myself and Bounty Killer. And oh, we, no matter how you look at us as, as, as talented artists, and mm -hmm. some people classify us as greats, we're in the studio, we have to humble ourselves in front of the great producer and let him do his thing. And if he wants mm -hmm. us to take the same line 50 times, 100 times, we have to just be humble and do the same line 100 times until we get it right. And I think people will enjoy the documentary when they see the whole process behind us working in the studio and see how much work is done just for you to get two and a half minutes or three minutes of a song. Understandable. My only question I got about this project now, especially documentaries, how did you get Dave to agree to be in a <laughs> film? That's what I want to know. How did you agree to What do you guys have to do? Yeah, well, it was a team effort, you know what I mean? <laughs> Dave, Dave Kelly is the type of interview man that stays far from cameras. And it was a team effort to kind of convince him Mm -hmm. uh, with his tricks up his sleeve. So I'll leave it until the documentary is ready. Then you'll mm -hmm. see if he's wearing a mask or you'll see if he's, if he's in the shadows, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. it'll be great because you'll hear him and see him, how he works with us and how, how much passion is there and how we take our work serious and just the little details and hopefully mm -hmm. like some of the younger generations and all the aspiring artists out there, they can learn something from us just being in the studio because this is something that's never been seen before. You know what I mean? 
Mm -hmm. Definitely. And especially how everything is so visual nowadays, that right there coming up with a documentary and visuals is definitely the right thing to be doing right now. Thank you. Respect, man. This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusichut.com.